It's Madden NFL 24, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Jacksonville Jaguars. All that and more coming up next. This is the NFL on EA Sports, and you get a look inside a hot and humid Everbank Stadium here in the city of Jacksonville. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. Meanwhile, for the visiting Seahawks, most of the pundits, yourself included, Charles, gave their draft class high marks. And that comes after a year where they struck gold in the fifth round with Tariq Woolen. And they also struck gold in the offensive line, getting brand new tackles at left and right. Struck gold with a running back who was a big time runner as a rookie. Yeah, there's something to be said about building through the draft. Take that, 14 yards on play number one. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. Walker now on first and 10. He'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Line of scrimmage, the 36 on second and eight. Out of the gun, Smith. That's to the rookie Jackson Smith and Jigba. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 44-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Their first possession of the game, and they're already going after double coverage. That's a nice completion that can set the tone for things to come if they're able to keep finding ways to beat what the defense is throwing at them. They look like they're confident that they can get it done. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now it's Smith, steps away. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A nice job there on the escape and scramble, a first down, a 16-yard gain. Give him a little extra credit there. His head was cool as the play broke down. Didn't force a throw, and in the end, got to show off his athleticism with a nice gain to bring up a new set of downs. Smith on first down. Flushed out right. And an off balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. to throw with Smith. He's got his big tight end fan. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A good pick up there, a 22. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Now it's Smith off the bootleg, flush to his right. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Geno Smith, 
A six-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Solid finish to a solid opening drive, and that's the threat that he represents. He can take off and score on you. What he makes it is 11-on-11 11 11 football because a lot of the times the quarterback isn't much of a runner, so you don't have to account for him. Well, you do with him, and now he actually gets a lead blocker instead, and he's able to cash that one in. Myers connects on the PAT, and that makes the score 7-0. Jason Myers to kick off for Seattle. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick of the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence and so many tapped to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. Hey, hey, this young man, hey. he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in the youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. This thrown quickly out to Jones. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be... Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. Picked by Julian Love. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got him the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that'll bring up second down. Now Smith. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here. It's a touchback. And they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, your first drive of the first quarter, you get it down there, try to fire it in the end zone, and big-time deflation on that play. No doubt about it. They're moving and grooving and getting into position, and this is not the ending that they saw on this drive, is it? They had things going their way. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little more momentum back that way. But for the defense, the goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. 
A man coming off an 1100 yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45 yard line. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Defensively, they were in the 3 4, and that O line just dominated the D line there. Let's go with the verbal telestrator here because that D line has a nose over the center and it has a two defensive end over the offensive tackles. That means the guards don't have anyone over the top of them. That creates a natural bubble inside. But they sprint upfield, take on the inside linebackers. If the back hits it fast enough, there should be space to run. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Straight ahead, ETN. Down to the 42, second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks 36. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Play action, it's Lawrence. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's Ford. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely, he was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, gotta catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. The Jags come up empty on fourth down, and the Seahawks are going to take over the football. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. That's complete to DK Metcalf. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Now Gino. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to draw that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. It's pretty early in the game, but they've already tried to establish it not just as a runner, but as a receiver as well. Didn't happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them try again shortly. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 31-yard line. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now Lawrence, a throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to a safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. On third down, Lawrence. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, 
he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than trying to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. Well, that's an excellent way to get the pass rush activated. The first sack of the game for them comes on the first play of the drive, and it makes it very tough for the opponent to pick up a first down now, playing behind the sticks. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Smith on the move to his left. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. A nice job of eluding the pressure there, scrambling for 11. Partner was a definite passing down, but he was able to leak out and pick up some good yardage, even though the coverage was excellent. Maybe it's not exactly how they drew it up, but he still got a big chunk of yardage on second down. This is Fant on the short completion. And he really stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. Calling a gain of three on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. Just a 25-yard punt. Not what he was hoping for by any stretch. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10. On their side of midfield at the 47. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. On second down, a run with ETN. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. When well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football, I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. His throw incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and 10. They'll send Kirk in motion right. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Now Lawrence. The pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Well, it's certainly going to be a lot tougher adding a touchdown to that lead now since they're facing second and 20-plus. Big-time sack to start the drive and put the opponent way back 
Let's see what kind of play call they come up with here. The Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. Here is third down and four. Throwing now is Geno. That ball nearly intercepted. He could not hang on. A pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least it'll be fourth down. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. But not good at all. Punt of just 24 yards there. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Motion man left is Kirk. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. A gain of 28 yards there and give them a first down. Boy, a lot of moving parts on this play, but what a nice design to lift the running back out to the left and send him down the field. And a good job spotting him and hitting him for a big play. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 27. ETN up the middle, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Have to give credit for a nice play there, but also have to look at it as a blown assignment. He became a free runner that turned into a free hitter. On second down, ETN once more. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. 53 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. And they'll go again with ETN. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis ETN from 17 yards out. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from evening this one up. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, 
You can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. To the right side, this is Walker. We'll get this up to about the 44. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. And it's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. These two teams all tied after one. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. They run again with Walker. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. His defense tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get him for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. On first down, Smith escaping the pressure right. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. From the 20, here's second and a couple. Now Smith being chased out left. He completes this to Walker, and he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Geno now to throw. Flush. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Josh Allen gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot. Four seasons in the league, and even with the addition of the number one overall pick to his defense last year, Allen remained the face of the Jaguars' pass rush. Again, led his team with seven sacks and a career high four forced fumbles. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Throwing is Smith. And his throw is incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. And this offense on third down today, they've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and forever. He's got his 
target. That's complete. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Walker is in. Touchdown, Seattle. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Now Myers for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was Kenneth Walker finishing things off with a touchdown run. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And a good tackle there right around the 30. Stops him short of the first down. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Let's take it on the 25. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker and the Seattle offense. The Omens effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. 
And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball because there's a rhythm that gets established, right? When you're running it well and the, the back's getting the ball and he's in sync and reading blocks and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't been an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to pay dirt. Sticking with Walker on second down. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Now try for the first with Walker. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. But it wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise on who was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. Walker with another carry. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Running right, here's Walker. He's brought down after a pickup of five, but he needed eight. Fourth down. And then we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. And now a high kick here as he'll try to hang it up there. They're pretty woeful there. Just 23 yards on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it, because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. On second down, ETN once more. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. 84 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. It's great seeing that type of run from ETN, and look, I know we couldn't consider him for rookie of the year last year, but it really was his rookie season since an injury cost him off 2021, and he looked like a rookie of the year. Ninth in the NFL with over 1,100 yards for a surging Jaguars offense. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Over the dime look on defense, two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That's allowed them to disrupt the play. From the gun, it's Lawrence. Flush to his right. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Great vision there by Lawrence as he scrambles for a first down. Now that's a quarterback who's in charge out there right now. Wants to throw the ball on third down, doesn't find anyone open, tucks it away, takes off, and picks up the first down, not by a little, but by plenty. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. Now Lawrence. Over the middle, he's 
got his tight end Ingram. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25 yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I know I spent a lot of time talking about tight ends in a lot of cases now, pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. Eluding the pressure right. And Lawrence going to smartly hit the deck here as he was able to pick up the first down of the process. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent game. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Was that a design pass, or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. Johnson, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. But just power of football there, down near the goal line. Give it to him, he's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. McManus' point after is good, and we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Here's Walker to start the drive. And a short pickup to about the 25. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. Sticking with Walker on second down. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 105 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. Going right back to Walker. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. On second down, it's Walker. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. He finds his way into the secondary again on this drive. They might want to try getting him down a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, what do they call that? Third level run, first level being the D line, and linebacker second level in the secondary, the third. When you block it up well and you make the secondary do all the tackling, that will wear on a defense. Straight ahead, Walker. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to pose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Up the middle, here's Walker. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. A two-yard gain on the play. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now it's the rookie from UCLA, Zach Charbonnet. Yeah, he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. 
It'll be a gain of two, and speaking of twos, it'll take us to the two-minute warning. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down is Jason Myers. This a 43-yard attempt. Myers kick is good and they take a 17-14 lead. So they get the three. It was fourth and one and yeah, I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's true. right? Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away and they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback Travis Etienne of the Jags offense set to take over again here he's toppled the century mark already receiving the football closing in on that on the ground too they've really had trouble handling him I think from what we've seen in this game his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them. And he's been that receiver. Now to bring him back to the backfield, I think his yard is running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Jaguars first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Lawrence going to get this to ETN. And this will be stopped at the 44. That will good for seven yards. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Now Lawrence to throw. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. On third down, here's ETN. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Just a two-yard pickup, and that should necessitate a call for the punt team here on fourth down. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. Fielded at the 20. 13 yards, the tally on the return there. And the Seahawks offense going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. And Walker has it. Now second and nine. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. Catch is made by Metcalf. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one covers 29 yards. First down. Off of play action. Here's Smith. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly 
picked. It's second down now. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. Man, it's caught at the six-yard line. Well, you don't have to be a genius to watch this game and figure out they've had plenty of success moving the football here in the first half. We've seen exhibits A, B, C, and right on down the line, haven't we? Yeah, we just saw exhibit Z right there. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit for the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Myers' kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half for the former Spartan, Kenneth Walker. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. Final preparations being made for the second half, both in terms of game plan and also hydration, because the humidity is really going to catch up to these guys, no doubt. And for the call of the second half, we go back to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and it'll be second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Lawrence. And his throw's going to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Forced out to his left. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. It was third and long, so he had to figure that the defense would be coming with extra pressure. Found a way to get away. He couldn't see the imaginary yellow line on the field, but he knew exactly where it was and found his way there for a first down. On first down, Lawrence tried for Kirk, and he's got him on the crossing route. And he'll be 
taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. A give up the middle to Johnson. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to. But they didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Blitz coming and down he goes. Ochenna Nuosu coming in hard there on the blitz and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Lawrence will throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. At the two-yard line. Here's Lawrence to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from capturing the lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it's a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point from McManus is good. And that will put them on top here in the third. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he elects not to bring this one out as his guys will take over at the 25. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just like, you know, heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. 16 yards right off the bat for the first down. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? And he'll be taken down at about the 45. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? It's a big play there for Seattle. 45 yards. Let's just call it as we just saw it right there. A breakdown defensively. Seems like no one went with the tight end, and no one really did. Had all sorts of space in the middle of the field. Yeah, everyone else was covered, but he was not. Big play results. So now, following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Now Gino. 
to the goal line, but it's incomplete. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Here's Smith. And that's off the mark, incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're thinking to stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the worker. He's going to stop him well short of the yellow line. Calling a gain of five, but still a decent ways from the end zone now on fourth and goal. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. Myers' kick is good, and they have regained the lead. So a response there to the touchdown of the opening drive of this third quarter as they're able to reclaim the lead. And I think you'll take that because obviously you'd like to be able to match them touchdown for touchdown, but the first order of business was to get the lead back, and they've done that. Now you want to give a good pep talk to your defense to take it from there. Jason Myers to kick off for Seattle. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Christian Kirk and company heading back onto the field. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. Especially with the touchdown. Yes. You're, way, never you're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that on the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. On second down, ETN once more. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there at a first down. It was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. ETN once more. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 10 yards there, good enough for the Jags first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage. At that time, they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time, it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A big play that time on the catch and run. 36 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. Give him a couple on the scramble, it's second down. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. On second down, Lawrence. Jones has it. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And they'll run with ETN. A good run of six yards there, gets them closer to the goal line with second down coming up. Defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you a little bit surprising. They wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The lighter shift your defensive backs allow you that opportunity. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. Here's third and goal now back at the 11. Hey, run! Now Lawrence. Got his man, it's clear! Touchdown, Jaguars! Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars have taken the lead here in this third quarter. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is the absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. McManus' point after is good, and the lead is up to five. the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. And out now come the Seahawks. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. I go to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Gino now to throw, sliding out of the pocket. Now well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Out of the gun, Smith. Left side here, taken in by Metcalf. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. DK Metcalf, 
seven yards. And the Seahawks have answered back with a third quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. And if you blinked, you probably missed that touchdown drive. It happened in a hurry. I was just putting mustard on my hot dog, and all of a sudden, he's in the end zone. I've got to do a better job of paying attention with this quick strike offense. I thought you were going to tell your wife about the hot dogs in the booth thing. I just did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You did. The extra point now coming from Myers. And the lead is now two. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it's DK Metcalf who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Jason Myers to kick off for Seattle. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Looking to throw Lawrence. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. That is caught. And a nice stiff arm. It opens room to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. They got 29 yards that time. That's a big gainer on that play, and from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. And he'll work down inside the 45. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Lawrence. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. Bobby Wagner in there to record another sack, and that is now six on the afternoon for this defensive unit. Lawrence, now this is ETN on the draw. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves him with a fourth down now. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. 
The Seahawks again now ready to take over on offense. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw. It's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Jaron Reed muscles his way in for the sack. That time, Charles, great job keeping him in the pocket and not letting him escape. And Brandon, I think this was a great example of the front and the back working together, meaning the back covering, no place to go with the football. And the front, terrific job on the edge, so he couldn't escape outside. And then, of course, the inside pressure kept him hemmed in as well. Here's Logan Cook now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is fielded at the 27. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Third quarter of a two-point game, a good one so far. Here's second and ten. Throwing now is Geno. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense, but this one a little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Thankfully for the offense, a fortuitous bounce there on the fumble goes out of bounds because they're down here in the red zone. You don't want to lose one there. You don't want to lose one. And the best part, because it went out of bounds, they retain possession, still have an opportunity to put points on the board. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. And the Seahawks first down. Back 
to Walker on first down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's been a good one so far, just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Smith. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Touchdown, Seattle. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. Such an art to dot the I, just get the feet in right there against the line before going out of bounds. Such an incredibly graceful, athletic play, but also a lot of practice goes into it. They work on that to make sure that they learn how to train their... And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game Maybe like this, they're going to take a good, long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How's the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, ruling on the field stands. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Now Myers for the extra point. And that makes it a nine-point game. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. Jason Myers to kick off for Seattle. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Lawrence. He'll get this off to ETN. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Now Lawrence. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Jordan Brooks with it. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. And that pretty much has been the storyline, Charles. This defense, they seem to be one step ahead from the start of the game until now. And you identified it perfectly, and we can see the frustration that's settling in now. And it's probably been there for a long time, but now it's evident because you can see it in their faces, you can see it in their body language, maybe even a little bit in that play call that ended up maybe closing them out. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. We've got a close game. The offense has played well, but right now, they've got to keep their foot on the gas. And that carries with it an extra bit of pressure, doesn't it? As much fun as they're having right now, they're locked in, really clicking on all cylinders. 
they also know that if they ever miss a chance to put points on the board, they've actually put their team in jeopardy. And that's not how you want to play the game. It's supposed to be complimentary football, offense, defense. But today, it's all offense for them. Yeah, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. It's probably going to need to continue. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? Throwing on third down, Smith. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Josh Allen able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Myers' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it, and they do so right there. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself how you show your team that you're still with it and how you continue to lead. Yeah, defensive back Jamal Adams in on the stop. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now Lawrence to throw. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. And Lawrence going to smartly hit the deck here as he is able to pick up the first down in the process. After the costly interception late, good job by him to keep it himself that time. Just tuck it, run it, and scramble for the marker. Don't give the coverage another chance at taking it away from you. A give to ETN running right. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. On second down, here's Lawrence throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. On third down, Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. Give him big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. The kick by McManus is good. And that lead is back down to nine now. So they hadn't called on him at all in 
until this point, but he comes through here and buries one from long range. Yeah, that's awfully impressive because usually kickers have to get that first one out of their system in the first quarter, sort of get them into the flow of the game, but to come in this late and knock it down from long distance, give him a lot of credit. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. He's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds. And then the last second, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to letting it slip away. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Now Smith flushed out right. Still shedding tackles. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. At least this time he's getting hit after a positive play for his offense. The pressure was coming through yet again, but he certainly didn't stick around for the sack on this occasion. Found an escape route and ended up getting the first down before taking the hit. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Throwing is Smith. Throw out wide to Walker. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. From the two now, second and goal. Back to throw, Smith. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Smith, under pressure, and they got to him again. Josh Allen getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. It'll be from the right hash and it'll be a 36-yarder. Myers' kick is good and that will extend their lead even further. So that not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. 
And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it. And he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. They'll run with ETN. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Now Lawrence on first down. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Jaron Reed picks up his second sack of the afternoon. At the Here's Lawrence. This one caught by Ridley. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 42. A gain there of 21 yards. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42 yard line. Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. It's a game of five. Brings up second and five on the Seahawks' 37-yard line. Lawrence will throw. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. A gain of nine, not enough, and it's fourth down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. So a big play there on fourth, and now first and 10 at the 30. Touchdown, Jaguars! Jamichael Hasty, 30 yards. And the Jaguars have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So there you go. They needed a big play, and they got one there on the touchdown run. And that was a very important drive. Of course, they all are when you're trailing in the second half. But what I really liked, they didn't panic. They knew they still had time to run the football and keep playing their game. Extra point from McManus is good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. To throw on second down is Smith. 
And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. And the Seahawks first down. To throw with Smith. They'll roll him out right. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Let's give him the credit he deserves because he can really do no wrong. It's got to be demoralizing for a defense to have someone who can cut up your secondary all game long with his arm and then rip off a huge game like this with his legs. A championship effort from that man under center. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They'll try the air now with Smith, buying time to his left. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Josh Allen, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. If you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Well, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Kenneth Walker with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks are able to add on to that lead. The Seahawks offense staying put out on the field. They're going to go for two. Geno's going to throw. And he's going to go down. Can't get rid of it. So a sack on the two-point try. Well, they tried to get two and ended up getting none because the quarterback had nowhere to go with the ball and ends up getting sacked. Nowhere to go at all. Great job, though, defensively. They were ready. touchdown here's Myers to boot it away and they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback First and ten, it's Lawrence. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. They'll come up now. This is second and long. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field 
and still couldn't find an open receiver. Lawrence into the hands of Ingram, and they worked this well upfield across the 45. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and 10. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Now Lawrence. That is incomplete. Just a difficult situation to be in here in the final minute. Down two scores. You know you need some prominence from somewhere. They're going to keep firing away till the end, but this one falls incomplete. Now Lawrence on third and long. And that is incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence flush to his right. The flag comes in. It's incomplete. And I'm not sure he was still behind the line when he let that one go. You get the fourth down conversion, and then you look up and you see a flag. I'm just holding my head in my hands right now because I know the head coach is doing exactly the same thing. It all went into getting it on fourth down, and that gets wiped out. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down, and that should just about do it. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. They run again with Walker. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. On third down, here's Walker. And he is going to lose yardage here. Fourth down now after a loss of two. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Rolling to his right. And he is going to be out of bounds a couple of yards short of the marker. And they will fail to convert here on fourth down. A final shot now for Lawrence. Steps away to his left. So it's a win for the Seahawks here. And it was thanks in large part to the play of the man who's been doing this for a while, their veteran quarterback. Yeah, he did a little bit of everything, didn't he? He had two touchdown passes through the air, another one on the ground. And that defense, they really had no answer for many of their drives. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.